welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. We're back up in North Yorkshire with our wonderful brand ambassador, Paul Kazira. Well, thank you for that, James, yeah. The sun's out, which makes a change. It's not it, raining. It does, it does around here at the moment, yeah. And we're fishing at um, a wonderful fishery called Oaks Lakes, which is near Sessie in North Yorkshire. Yep. Where I come from, which is North Yorkshire, we call it Cesar, James. Cesar. Cesar. All right, then. Yeah, you got Cesar. that Cesar. OK. Yeah, we've so, got it right between us anyway, <laughs> yeah. So we thought, as always, we'd like to do a head-to-head. -head. Just have yeah. a little bit of, uh, add, a, add a little bit of spice to the day. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to switch things because the last um, video that we did up here, the last head-to-head, -head, I fished the waggler, didn't you? Yeah, and you fished the pole. Yeah. So we're going to switch it the other way. And for me, actually, I haven't fished a long pole. I was just chatting to Chappie when we were setting up, probably for four or five months with the way the weather's been. We've had so many matches cancelled and one thing or another with the weather. So I'm really looking forward to fishing the pole again. Yeah, it should be good today because winds disappeared, which is the first time for a month with the hurricanes yeah. we've been having. And uh, I fish these, uh, this complex quite often through the winter and I fish the Waggler exclusive. Well, you've so, been doing really well in the matches, haven't yeah, you? You've won uh, two or three matches, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, so uh, that's why I feel I might have a chance to So do, that's why I'm fishing the pole and you're yeah, fishing the Waggler. that's right, yeah. yeah. Well, that sounds about right. So we're going to fish 11 while four, yeah. five hours. Normal match conditions, yeah. yep. And it's silverfish only, yeah? Yep. Just to be clear, does that include F1s or not? No, it is silverfish germs. Okay. Yeah. So no carp at all. Roach and skimmers, and we maybe might catch some hide as well. Yeah, there'll be some hide. Yeah, or okay. perch possibly. Yeah. Right then. So I won the pound last <laughs> last time. Oh, so, you saved it. Yeah. So yeah, I recognise. I recognise the cord on the yeah, back. Yeah. So <laughs> we're fishing for a pound. Right. So we're not messing about. We're not going to mess about. Anyway, all the best, Paul. And Let's you. have a good time. Yeah. I've invited James uh, up to the Oaks here in uh, North Yorkshire at Cesar just to uh, introduce him to what I've been doing through the winter and that's uh, fishing silver matches. There's uh, a big complex of lakes here and we tend to fish four of them for silvers, the rest are for the carp anglers. We've come on uh, the alders pool today, there's 38 pegs on it and uh, it gets fished three or four times a week, silvers matches. So I think this is gonna give us the best chance. Today, we've had, uh, all the winds have dropped from the hurricanes and cyclones we've been having out here. But because uh, the pressure's lifted, we've got high pressure, we've had frosts. So we never get it easy in winter. We've had three frosts on the trot, so 
How it's going to fish today, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty confident we'll get a few. And uh, as we said in the intro, James is fishing the pole, I'm fishing the waggler, and uh, the waggler is something I concentrate quite a lot on in these silver matches. Uh, and the reason for that is in the winter, the, the pulls, are, the water clears up and, uh, and I feel a waggler gives me a better chance. And uh, I've sort of proved that in, in the matches we've fished. I've, uh, I've framed all bar in one match really since we've been here and won, won a few with some decent weights. And uh, the tactics I use are uh, a caster, loose fed, and uh, usually on two lines. And here we are, I've got one now. And our target fish is small eyed, like this one, Ooh. which I should have netted. <laughs> small eyed and, uh, and roach. They go to probably the eyed up to up to eight ounces you get the odd one nudging a pound but not very often and the roach are the same sort of three ounce bracket to eight ounces so you can soon build a good weight up when the when they do come onto the feed and uh, what i tend to do and that's what i'm doing today is i feed down the middle which is around four foot deep and uh, I have two rods set up one set dead depth and I have another one set a foot off the bottom and when the fish start to come up in the water I'll use the other rig now the other rig has got a slightly heavier float on and we'll go on to that later on in this uh, in the video but um, the other rig is set that foot shallower because on the far bank the ledge is uh, is still quite deep but it's a, it's about a foot deep a foot shallower than it is in the middle so i've got the advantage of being able to fish up to the island at the far side there with the heavier rig which gets me out there at dead depth or i can pull it into the middle when the fish are feeding up in the water. There we go, I've got one at depth again. When the, when the fish are feeding up in the water and uh, it produces better fish as the match goes on. I'm gonna net this one so we can get to look at it before it drops off. And uh, another one of these hide. And you can soon build a weight up with these. And that's typical of what we'll catch. Just pop him in the net. The weights I've been getting in these in these matches have been uh, have been quite good, really. You do really need about thirty pound to win win one of these matches or to to get in the frame. And uh, I've been lucky enough to have weights in excess of that. I've had I've had one weight of uh, forty six pound, and that was. Uh, all hide and roach again, just like the one you've seen me catch about that size, and I had 120 odd fish. So you, you can you can tell the weight of them. Eight, 80 of them is between 26 and 30 pound normally, and and that really is achievable when uh, once you get them into your swim and constant loose feeding. I find anyway with the caster seems to work best. Hemp works as well. It's it's just the noise that attracts them, as as pretty much it does everywhere. And uh, I find that fishing the caster avoids the carp as well, which can be a problem if you fish the maggot. So we'll find out as the day goes on. But uh, not a bad start. We're we're uh, probably just about an hour in, and I've had eight nine fish so far. So uh, that's about standard for uh, for how the match starts i'd expect to boost that to 15 to 20 the second hour and then hopefully you're looking at 20 fish an hour after that 
I wonder how James is getting on. How are you doing out there, mate? It's been a slow start for me. Obviously, we had quite a hard frost last night. But uh, I'm actually just really enjoying being out on such a beautiful still day. Feels almost spring-like this morning. The birds are singing. I've seen a woodpecker. So it's just really nice to be out and not battling with the elements all the time. I don't tend to fish a lot of commercials like this, but what struck me straight away was what a lovely setting it was here. There's a lot of different lakes and the facilities are fantastic. We had a wonderful breakfast before we started. So I had a, a good chat with Paul last night about the, the tactics and he explained how he's been catching some great bags of silverfish through the winter. And basically explained that he'd been feeding casters over maggots and fishing the waggler in preference to the pole. So the way I started off was I've fed four different lines. I fed two lines with just a ball of ground bait, which was lake, census lake, uh, mixed with a few micro pellets and a few casters. My thinking was just to kind of kick the swim off. Um, I fed one of, one of those balls at 11 metres in front of me and one at 11 metres to my left. There's another one of those small eyed. And I've fed two lines where I've just been loose feeding because Paul explained that you know, he's been catching 20 to 30 pound in some really harsh conditions. So we're expecting to catch some fish today. And I was hoping that I might be able to catch them a bit closer on the pole. So I'm feeding one line by hand with just sort of three or four casters. And then another line in front of me at six meters with maggots just to to see because obviously I'm I'm fishing blind really I'm just having to sort of make it up as I go along and work out what the best tactics are. Interestingly on this peg most of depths on this side of the lake and I felt that I'd probably catch in the deeper water but I've been proved wrong I've not had a bite so far. I've actually had to go a bit further out past my initial feed to 13 meters and that's where I've just had those two small eyed so it looks like the fish have perhaps backed off whilst we've been setting up and making a bit of a bit of a noise. Um, I don't know, maybe that's where they live anyway, but uh, my intention is to try and feed them a bit closer. I'm not feeding too accurately. Paul's explained that he's been catching on the waggler and I'm not trying to keep everything too tight on the pole. And I'm just gonna suck it and see really. I've got three different rigs set up with different floats and at the moment I'm I'm catching just on the bottom with quite a light float, a, a 0.1 float. Yeah, so it was a bit of a slow start and I was twitching a bit because I saw Paul was catching a few fish and there's another ride. So, you know, it's worth bearing in mind when you're fishing in the winter, particularly on a frosty morning like this, you've got to take your time and the fish should start feeding. So hopefully as the session goes on, we'll, well, the fishing should get stronger. I'm fishing a single fluoro maggot at the moment and my intention is to catch on the caster like Paul's been doing so just pleased to get a response now and start to get a few bites.
Well, two hours in and it's going pretty much as uh, as I expected and, and uh, what we normally come across in matches. I've uh, been catching a few down the middle, that seems to have dried up a bit and so I'm going across on the shallower rig, getting a few bites, hooking a few fish. If I get a bite and miss it, then it's a case of just leave it over, over the middle and I can usually pick one up, that foot off the deck that we talked about before. But um, in the matches, I like to target round about 30 fish after two hours, then I know you're somewhere about looking at framing. And uh, looking at my counter, I've got 28, so I'm not far away. I've also dropped one in, so I'm about on schedule for what would be a framing weight in a, in a match if it keeps going like this. They're all coming to caster, single caster. I keep trying maggot but um, it doesn't get me the bites as quickly as caster does. I think that's because I'm feeding caster obviously and uh, they've just got where well, they're tuned into the casters. I, I usually set off with a maggot on a hook but it tends just to pick the small fish up and uh, if you feed maggots, it's the same thing. You tend to get smaller fish. So I like to stick with caster. You get fewer fish, but there's a lot better stamp. And so that's a good weight builder. And uh, it's something I do pretty much everywhere I go. I could go to a new venue and I'll still feed caster. When I came here at the beginning of the winter, it's the first time the winter series has been on here. And I was told the key to weights on here is maggot. Feed plenty of maggot, maggot on the hook. Well, I decided to go do something different and right from day one I fed caster and uh, it served me well and it's, it's serving me well again today. Like we say, they, although it's quite warm now, it's been really, really cold. Uh, it has had ice over it a couple of days ago so you tend to get a bit of a false impression now it's getting where we can take our coats off when we're sat in the sun quite warm but the fish obviously are reluctant to feed too well but um, it is going okay I'm quite happy with the way it's going and I seem to have lost them on the far side so I'm going to get the deeper rig out and down the middle again. I've been getting some nice roach down the middle, but uh, at the moment the majority seem to be the eyed. I'm changing to the deeper rig now because uh, I'm having to wait for bites. So my thinking is. If we're having to wait for bites and the, the grubbing around picking the loose casters up off the floor, you tend to catch bigger fish if you can catch them on the deck um, when it's like this. So the reason I've changed is earlier on in the session I was catching quite well on the deeper, in the deeper water in the middle, then it sort of tailed off and even coming up shallow in the middle didn't seem to produce many bites so as always you, the fish tend to back off so I picked the heavier shallower rig up and cast across and I've started catching well uh, I plundered a few off that line and, and the bites have slowed down so that's telling me the fish have dispersed a bit again I've disturbed them a bit so I'm resting that and uh, having to go on my original deep line again. And there you go, going back on the deeper rigs, paid a dividend. As uh, straight away, I've hooked one of those nice little eyed. 
another four ounces in the net. How's it going, James? I'm doing all right, but not as good as him. Um, that slow start's definitely costing me. It's the eye that I'm typically catching now. They're not a bad stamp, most of them. Had a few roach as well. And had to learn pretty quickly, really. I think I'm starting to suss things out a bit. The first thing to say is, I'm not really catching anything. I haven't caught anything on my close in lines. That almost seems to be a, a waste of time. I'm, I'm still feeding it, but basically I'm finding that the fish, uh, most of the fish anyway, are quite close to the island. And I only really had one line that I was feeding close to the island. That's straight in front of me. And I had a, a nice run of fish and it went a bit iffy. And I think what was happening was the, the fish were backing off and I hadn't really got another productive line to switch to, to rest, rest that swim. So what I did was I've opened up another line to the left, just by loose feeding casters over to the left by that tree, um, to give me another option, another line to sort of, so I can swap between the two. And that's starting to, to work now. I've experimented with depths and rigs, and by far the best rig is my lightest rig, which is a 0.1 of a gram. It's getting the odd fish and the odd missed bite, which made me think I need to fish with a bit more finesse. So I've gone down to a 09 hook length and a 20 hook, and that's definitely helped as well. I think we're sort of two and a half hours in now. I know I'm a fair way behind Paul, but hopefully if I can keep these eyed coming, these better ride, by switching between the two lines, trying the closer line and also just a little bit, I've got another line where the fact that I'm spreading the caster slightly, I can fish in a bit deeper water. So I'll keep trying that, but definitely at the moment, the fish seem to be backing off to the island and that's where I'm getting most of my bites. Well, I can see why Paul's been doing so well on the waggler because obviously by feeding and fishing a waggler it's quite different to a pole and maybe the fact that these fish are a bit smarter than I was giving them credit for and um, perhaps they can see the pole over their heads I don't know or maybe just the fact that you're fishing more accurately with the pole you may be spooking the fish and with a waggler by its nature you're fishing a much much bigger area and picking fish from different parts of your swim so I'm sort of consciously trying to do that with the pole now so I'm I've actually reduced the feed I'm still feeding very regularly but I'm reducing the amount of feed because I think I was going a bit mad on the feed as well I'm trying to catch Paul up and it's uh, something that I find a bit difficult on commercials because obviously I tend to fish rivers and natural lakes and I'm used to feeding more bait so I have to keep reminding myself just to cut back and what I'm trying to do is pinch a couple of fish or one fish off one line and then switch to the other. Well, I mentioned at the start that I really like this fishery. It's very well established and the bird life is absolutely fantastic. We've got the birds singing and it's a lovely place to be. And now we're coming out of this terrible winter. I can imagine that this is a fantastic venue. And if I lived more local, it's one that I'd like to fish just to get a day out and Guarantee to catch some fish. And uh, just get out, enjoy my fishing. These eyed are a curious fish. I mean, I don't really fish for eyed. There's a few venues that I've caught them and I've caught big eyed when I've been fishing over in Denmark, but I think they're fantastic. 
such intriguing fish and a bit like roach really they're quite seemingly quite smart and you have to trick them I'm experimenting with different hook baits I've tried different coloured maggots and casters I've caught on all baits I heard Paul saying that he was catching best on caster but I'm catching best on fluoro maggot but I'm going to keep trying the caster because obviously like Paul was saying you're probably going to get a better stamp of fish on the caster so I just have to keep remembering to not feed quite as heavily and try and be uh, quite regimented and rotate around the different swims perhaps if I can get the fish going on the pole I might be able to catch them quicker than Paul if I can get the, the decent stamp well, that one's come off I've just bumped a couple fishing with a smaller hook so if I bump too many I'll go back to an eight, perhaps try an 18 Oh, that sun feels good. I think the lesson I've learned today about fishing with a bit more finesse is, is worth noting. Because obviously if I was fishing a natural venue for, for silverfish, I'd be fishing quite fine and certainly to start with. And I was probably a bit silly today, fishing a bit too heavy to start with and that might end up costing me. But Obviously when you're fishing for silverfish like this, even in the winter, sometimes you, you can start to get pestered by carp and that's another, another consideration of how you're feeding. And I don't want to feed too much bait because, well certainly too much bait on one line because I might start to attract carp and as Paul stated, they don't count. So there's really no point fishing too heavy because it's not like you've got a hook and land carp. And I'm also thinking I could have done with a even lighter rig. I think that might have worked even better than this one. Well, started to get a bit of a routine going now, rotating between the two lines over by the island. Um, mainly catching eyed still, but the odd nice roach. Mostly recently I've been netting the fish, so the stamp's just slightly improved. I'm using my Match top three on my CP2000 pole. And this is a Preston six solid elastic. The CP2000 is a wonderfully versatile pole. And I use it obviously on natural venues like rivers and natural lakes and also on commercials. And some of my friends and brand ambassadors use the pole on the commercials for carp so it is a very very versatile pole as you can see I'm fishing today at 13 meters and it's very very stiff it's just a a joy to use we're bringing out a, a new version in June which is a CP1000 that's going to be fully interchangeable with this pole in terms of it's the same mandrel same top kits but it's that bit stronger so I think that's going to be even better for carp fishing when you're catching big carp and amassing big weights so that's the sort of stamp of eyed I'm catching now 
I'm catching them quite well. So I think I've slowly worked it out today. I've actually gone even finer. I'm fishing a 08 hook length now um, on a 18, a bit finer 18 hook. And what I'm doing is I'm just swapping between those two lines. I've completely disregarded the inside lines. I've not caught on both of the six meter lines. So clearly the fish are over towards the cover of the island. And I'm just, the sort of routine I'm doing now is I'm, I'm feeding the line that I've just caught a fish from. And I'm not feeding the line that I'm going on hopefully catching a fish and then repeat the process and that seems to be working really well because I don't think I'm plundering one line for too long. I found the bites quite fascinating to work out. The eider are, are quite sneaky, the bites are not great even though I'm fishing with quite a small float and as you can see I've got it dotted right down. The bites can be quite, quite slight. I have found that because I'm fishing slightly over depth now, I'm fishing about three inches over depth and I'm just letting the bites develop. But uh, I'm finding that even though I'm catching on the bottom, if I place my rig in and just keep a tight line to the rig so I'm getting an, a nice fall of the bait down to the bottom. I'm sort of trying to achieve the best presentation I can. And quite often, just as the bait's hitting the bottom, I'm getting a bite. I thought I was going to catch up in the water today, and it hasn't worked at all, so it must be that cold frost that we had in the morning, and the fact that they're quite shallow lakes, I think the fish are definitely staying close to the bottom, and I missed that one. I'll just try my other line, whilst I feed that one. The sun's out and I'm, I'm actually thinking I need to take a coat off. It's really lovely. I just hope that's the last of the winter, but you never know in March. It's just so nice not being battered by the wind and getting soaked every time. When you're fishing like this, you want to pull them up quite carefully and work out two spots that are the same depth. So you can just swap between the two without changing, obviously adjusting your depth. So I think I mentioned I was probably feeding, I was going a bit mad with the cast as I was feeding too many and I think I was feeding too often. So I've cut back now to just feed in probably four or five casters. I'm gonna try a red maggot. Been catching on caster fluoros and a red maggot. So I get the impression that the fish, they're obviously feeding, but they're not going mad. I bet you in a month or two, you could really catch them, catch them closer and probably catch them up in the water. I've kind of learnt at my cost today that you can really only fish to the conditions that you're faced with. And I know if I fish this again, I'd definitely be a lot more cautious with how I was feeding. And I'd, I'd have just fished over towards the island. I might even have put another line in. So I've got three lines to switch between over by the island. I haven't gone right over on this line. I suppose I'm fishing about half a metre from the island because I, I want somewhere for the fish to be able to back off to. Obviously in the last, the sort of dying minutes of the match, I might go right over, see if I can pick up a few quick fish, but just missing a few bites here, so. I think I'm going to just shallow up an inch or two next time I come back in. 
I've had a few bites sitting and waiting with the bait off the bottom, but by far the best way has been just um, lifting the rig slightly, just letting the maggot or the caster fall back down to the bottom. Oh, definitely missing bites there, so that's been the pattern really. I sort of catch two or three fish quick. I need to change something, so I'm just going to shallow up a couple of inches. And I'm going to change to a fluoro maggot. It's funny how just changing your hook bait like this, you can suddenly go in and get a bite. They must be there, the little tricksters. How's it going down in the Liverpool end, mate? Right, we'll take a break from the fishing and we'll have a look at the rigs I'm using first. Just give us a bit of a line. Right, my deeper rig, which for fishing down the middle is um, pro it's probably about four foot deep, maybe four foot six, something like that. And uh, we'll set off from the float end and work our way down. Chappy can catch that. I'm using the Drennan Glow Top float. You probably noted, noticed it's well painted the top of that. Because I'm fishing into the shadows now, so I like to paint them yellow. I'll, uh, I'll maybe just show you that when I've gone through this rig, how I do that, because it's quite quick. I've got uh, five number eight locking that float on the line, and I like to wrap a bit of lead round the base of my float, just to, uh, to balance it semi-loaded. I put what shot I want on the line, and then I load the float to suit. So that just loads that just nice. I've got three number 10 droppers for a nice slow fall through the water because we are fishing for roach and hide. So then you can pick up bites up in the water and that's when our shallower rig comes into play. We've got one, two, and three. And that's just resting on the top of a six inch hook length. And today I'm using 08 hook length to a size 16 B911 F1 hook. And, uh, and that's those, if Chappie can pick that one up. Nice light, fine wire hook. Perfect for this sort of fishing. The real line is two pound Maxima, or 12. And I'm using uh, my normal 11 foot match number one. And that's coupled with a 3000 reel, CS10 3000. Right, I'll clip that back up. And then, uh, as we said earlier, that set main depth, just dead depth. And then I have a heavier float, which is set a foot shallower. Same principle, number eight's locking it, and it's loaded, but this time it's a 4BB. And that's so I can get the extra distance needed to go to the far bank, or in this case it's an island. Same situation with droppers, three number 10, same 08 hook length and size 16 B911. And I tend to use the size 16s because I fish single caster and it, I find it's just perfect for it. You don't bump many fish off. Same rod, same setup, same reel. So in a nutshell, that's it. I'm just gonna show you a couple of other little tips that I use. I'll just fire some more bait out. To get this method to work with the roach, I've got to constantly fire bait out. 
some of you may have used catapults like I'm using here. And when you're catapulting every 20, 30 seconds like I do through a five hour session, it can tangle up. I don't have much of a problem with that. And one of the reasons, a good tip, it's not, it's not something, uh, it's not mine, it's uh, something I've seen somebody else do. But uh, I keep silicon spray because I use it a lot to make my line float when I'm stick float fishing on the river. And to stop your, your elastic tangling up around your catapult every time you, put, every time you catapult out, just spray a bit into the top of those like that, down in there, and that enables that to freely spin round. You'll just try that at home and you'll see. So every time you catapult out, your catapult lands perfectly ready for the next time. Never tangles. If you find it dries out, you just give it another, another squirt. Works perfectly all the time. That's a great tip, that. And I buy my silicon spray just from a builder's shop. A pound of tin, maybe two pound of tin or something like that. It's a bargain. And you know, I was a Yorkshireman like a bargain. Right, the rig I've got set up for dead depth, I mark it with a tipex on the rod, right to the top of the float. You can see the little mark there. When I lift my float up, that's set absolutely dead depth. And when I'm fishing for roach, I like, it, I like uh, the bait to sit absolutely bang on dead depth. You see a lot of lift bites like that with that first telltale shot being only six inches away from the hook. So uh, should you crack off, should you hook a carp and crack off or even get caught in the trees like uh, unfortunately I have today, but it happens to us all, you can quickly set up to your dead depth rig. And then all I do with my other rod is, I've got that set exactly the same for the far shelf, which is a foot shallower. And, uh, and that becomes my up in the water rig for down the middle. So another good tip for you there. Right, let's get some fishing done. I referenced it before, but the elastic I'm using in both my top kits is Preston number six. The main line is 012 of this Vest Pro line, 0125. Um, this is the float or the pattern of float I'm using and 0.1 of a gram has been the best. Um, you can see it's got a hollow bristle, which I really like. It's very easy to spot. And it's got a carbon stem, which I think is really important because I'm fishing quite light um, on the drop at times, and that ca carbon stem's allowing me to read the bites a lot better than a wire stem. It's been so beautiful today and flat and calm, so there was no need for a heavier float or a wire stem float. And then, Simplicity itself really when it comes to the actual pattern. I've used four styles They're number 10 styles and at the moment they're equally spaced I've been using them as a little spread bulk and playing around with the With the shotting pattern of those styles. I like styles when I'm fishing like this on lighter lines because I just think it gives you that bit more finesse bit better presentation uh, hook length I started on 012, which I soon realised was a mistake, went down to 010, and then finally I settled on 087 of Vespro. So that's definitely been a game changer today, fishing a bit finer obviously. With the water temperature being lower, the fish have been a bit more tricky, so that's worked really well. I started off on the Camasan B911 F1 hooks in a size 18, and then dropped down to a 20 and an 18 in this guru pattern which is it's called a super lwg and i like that it's a nice sharp lightweight barbless hook so that's it really i set up another rig almost exactly the same but a little bit heavier just if i was catching in the deeper water and that's a point two uh, everything else is the same in terms of the main line um, I didn't use styles on this, I used stots. But because I caught in that shallower water up by the island, the point one rig was best.
a quick tip for you. Obviously, feeding casters being the, the best today. I've got these beautiful casters from Lanes, super fresh. What I like to do is, I don't like to keep them in water. So, I'll keep the bulk of them in a bag like this. Just keep it wrapped up like that so no air can get to it. And then just add small amounts to the tub that I'm feeding from. So, by not keeping them in the water, they start to turn slowly and you get a lovely crispy caster. And if you're fishing that on the hook, I think it's a lot better. And also, when you're feeding them, you seem to be able to feed them a lot more accurately. So I've caught on different colours maggots and obviously castor on the hook. I think probably the best bait today has just been single fluoro maggot and I've just been hooking it that way. I really like fl um, fluoro maggots now and perhaps on a hard day like this it can just make a little bit of a difference so it's worth getting a few fluoro maggots and pinkies when you're fishing in the winter and early spring. Well, chap is called time and I just had that smaller roach on the whistle, so that's my last fish. It's been a brilliant session, I've really enjoyed it and learned a hell of a lot as well. Right then, Paul. Hi, James. <laughs> it's the scales of justice. Oh, is that what it is? You've got your pound back, but let's weigh in and see, yeah? Right, we'll, we'll see, yeah. Oh, look at them. It's been a wonderful day. You've got some nice fish there, haven't you? Just uh, that first couple of hours has cost me really, but. Oh, we've got them. What you got? 19 pound 15. Ooh, and I'm guessing I've got 20. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking net of fish. Let's get them back. You better call. Oh. You better call. <laughs> I'm not calling it. He's done me, he's ounced me. 19.8. I can't believe that, can you? No. <laughs> You've got more fish, haven't you? Done me again on my own venue. Well done, Paul. I can't believe how close that was, mate. I, I don't know one thing, James. <laughs> your, your quality, your fish was much bigger, wasn't it? Yeah, let me just turn. You did say that when yeah. you, you talked yeah. about it. They're much bigger, aren't they? Yeah, but nowhere near as many yeah. as you. That last sort of hour, hour and a half, I've caught really well. And 
Yeah. yeah well, Even though they were a smaller stamp. And that slowed down a bit, yeah. But it's been an enjoyable day. It's been brilliant. Get them back, Paul, and we'll... Off you go back. Chappy's happy, so we'll get them back. Yeah. Right then, Paul. I'm sorry to say it, mate. <laughs> it was that tight. But I want that pound. Come on. Talking about tight. Here we go. Yeah. Come on. There you go, James. Thanks, mate. Beautiful to keep that in my well possession. Well done, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. And well done to you. I mean, when you think about it, two contrasting approaches in terms of Waggler against pole. Well, that was the idea, wasn't yeah. it, today? Yeah. And really, you know, th there's not been much to separate us. What was it? I mean, it was only ounces. three, four ounces or something. Yeah. So yeah. one fish in the end. Well, it was, yeah. Pro probably that one I dropped back in, you never know. <laughs> yeah. That's match fishing, though. Yeah. Well, it is, yeah. The but, um, for me, I mean, I've learned so much. Obviously, I thought I might catch close, mm. shallow, too early in the year. I think we can yeah. conclude that. Yeah. Most, well, all the fish I caught were over by the island. I had a few a little bit closer back, but the majority of the fish were on the island. And the game changer for me was feeding two lines. Yeah. So I could switch between the two. To start with, I started to catch them and I was plundering them too much. So I needed another line so I could rest it. That's... And uh, the last hour, you know, I've come really good and even actually started to catch a little bit off the bottom as well. So, yeah, yeah I've, I've, learned, I've, I've learned a lot. Yeah, I found it very similar, really. I fished it probably about 13 metres on the waggler yeah. in, in the deep section and you'd get two or three and then they'd disappear but what they're doing is they're moving back up and towards yeah. the island yeah. at the moment and yeah. uh, whether the sun helped with it being clear or not I don't know but um, but I found the same thing spreading the bait around uh, helped a lot well, you, you were dead right with that and that's what I did I think I, you know maybe I could have fished it with a, a, a pot a pole pot yeah. fed it really tight but I think it would have been the wrong thing to do I, I could I catch it. tight a little bit further on the other line and just keep swapping it like that yeah well, well I, I was casting about all over and and I found that you'd maybe get two fish from the same yeah. small area yeah. but you'd have to go about and I, yeah. and I think when you are catching more, I mean, we've had those frosts, I think that's what's put them down, because normally we would expect to catch. Well, I went, I went nearly an hour without catching, yeah, and you were straight in, so, same yeah. Me. Um, wow, absolutely fascinating. Mm. Um, I did catch on caster, but I found fluoro maggot was my best bait. Yeah. I caught on all different colours, and I did catch mm. on caster. Good thing about the maggot was, if I missed a bite, I could go back in that's again. Right, and, yeah. Yeah. But I think you caught those better fish on the caster. All on caster, yeah. Mm. I did try the maggot. I had mm. two fish on the maggot, one one little skimmer and and a small roach. So I uh, I just stuck with the caster. But uh, normally on here, when when the the fish are feeding confidently, the caster's king. Yeah, I bet I it is. Him, I bet yeah. it is. But uh, they're just one yeah, other thing just to make note of was mm. fishing finer with more finesse. I was yeah. just stupid fishing the commercial off. Yeah. I was fishing 012 hook lengths and it was definitely wrong. When I scaled down to 09, to ni yeah. nice bit longer hook length and a finer hook, yeah. I was catching two or three times as many yeah. fish. So yeah. that was definitely a lesson learnt there. Yeah, well, I've been using 08 and yeah. half of it is because I'm throwing to the island and if I get caught, I can break <laughs> off. <Yeah. laughs> That's a good tip. <laughs> it's, yeah, another good tip, yeah. So yeah. right then, I think um, we better head back to the calf and uh, have a cup of tea. Uh, yeah. I'm going to let the traffic go, so I've thoroughly enjoyed it today. I'm really yeah. impressed with this fishery and I'd love to come back, um, you know, fish it perhaps a little bit later in the season, uh, have a go for the carp as well. But yeah, we'll, the we'll quality that, of the yeah. fish, I think, absolutely beautiful. And to catch eyed like that, that's quite novel for me. Yeah, it is for you, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, mm. we're used to it here. Yeah. Mm. But uh, one thing I'd like to say is thanks to the Kerr family for inviting us here today. Laid us breakfast on, it's been a right treat. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I must yeah. say, yeah, thank you very much and I've yeah. thoroughly enjoyed it. So, from me um, and Paul, yeah, thanks for thanks watching. For watching. Monty, we did it, we did it, we got the pound. Yeah.